Now note, as you're entering bills, you could of course enter the vendors as you enter a bill. And when we add new vendors, this is often the way we do it. Because remember the vendors for most companies, we don't need a lot of information about them. Many companies want a lot of information about their customers. Some don't because you might be selling, selling at a food truck or something. In that case, you probably don't get your, your customers names even, or at least don't record them. Uh, but some customer, if you have repeat customers, you want detail and you want to foster a relationship with them, get their address and whatnot. On the payable side of things, usually we're just paying things like the phone bill, the electric bill. All I need is the name in order to facilitate the electronic transfer or the check. But sometimes we might want to facilitate a relationship with our vendors where we want more information, especially if we have shipping information, such as when we're purchasing the inventory that we're selling. So keep that in mind. So we're often going to be adding the vendors as we enter bills, as we enter the checks or as we enter the expense forms. If I want to add, add a vendor to the vendor center, then I'm going to go to the left hand side under the expenses, which is kind of like the vendor center and then vendors on the left. If you were under the business view, it would be under the get paid and pay area. And then you've got the pay area and vendors on the left. So then if I was to add a vendor, uh, we can import the vendors or add one. Let's just add a vendor so you can kind of see the screen with, when it has a vendor in it. So I'm going to add like a generic vendor. I'm just going to call it, you know, BBB vendor here. And let's just tap through the screens. These are, these are the data input screens you can use. This screen is the only one that is a re required field that has the asterisk. Everything else you may not need. Title, first name, middle name, looks a lot like the customer's email, uh, phone number, mobile, obviously the contact information, the website. And then at the address, we have the address, which might be, could be necessary. Uh, if you're dealing with inventory, possibly with the vendor, although your destination address where they're going to ship the inventory is probably the more and the thing that's more necessary. And then uh, tax information. This is going to be if you have to give them a 1099 in the United States, that's an added burden. If they're not incorporated, for example, then you got to. So the general rules are this with a 1099 or the general rules are this when you pay somebody then you're likely to get an expense, which is a deduction for taxes. It's actually good for taxes. The IRS is going to try to get you to give them information about who you're paying because they want to track the income side of things. So they might do that if you have employees by requiring you to withhold the money and so on and so forth. If you're paying a company like the telephone company, you don't typically have any re reporting requirements because they feel like they've got their fish hooks into those big companies already. So they don't really need your reporting on them to verify their taxes. But if you're paying a little guy like a sole proprietor, they don't feel like they got their fish hooks deep enough into those people. That's when you might have to issue a 1099. So if you're adding a vendor that it's a sole proprietor, then you might have this added 1099 requirement, which will help you to track and possibly create the 1099s. And then you got the expense rate. If there was a billing rate, uh, the payment terms uh, down here, if there's a standard payment terms, meaning when it's going to be due, if you enter a bill, how far past the bill is it going to be due for? And then the default expense account, which is kind of nice because you can then allocate like an expense account per a particular vendor. And there might be situations where you might use a slightly different vendor name for different, uh, e even though it's the same company, so that you can allocate each time you use that vendor name to its own particular expense account. But also note that as you memorize transactions after entering data in the first month, when you enter a second bill, for example, it will usually memorize the transaction from the prior bill or expense form or check. And therefore you'll have an ability to see what happened in the prior period. And here's the opening balance. That's the thing that we're gonna enter, which when we do QuickBooks, this is the opening balance for Epiphone. QuickBooks will then create a, a balance for us uh, related to it. It'll enter a journal entry increase in the accounts payable. And the other side will probably go to an uncategorized expense form because it'll make a bill. Basically, that means we want to enter it, make sure we enter it as of 
uh, the last period of the prior period, 1231-22, which was what we will do. So I'm going to save this just so we can see what it looks like when we have a vendor in it. So here's the normal vendor situation. Now you've got your BBB.